That's why like when people are like, oh, I want to exercise, like great, sleep in your workout clothes and put your alarm clock across the room and set your alarm for 10 minutes early. All of a sudden you get to wake up, you have to get out of bed and go across the room to turn it off. And you're like, well, I'm already dressed. I probably go do the thing. His main priority is to get desk jockeys, nerds, and average Joes into shape. He is the founder of Nerd Fitness with the tagline, Level Up Your Life Every Single Day. And his new book, Hot Off the Press, (laughs) ladies and gentlemen, 350 pounds, 8 foot tall, all muscle, (laughs) Steve Cam. (sighs) Yeah, crowd goes wild, right? What's up, dude? How you doing, man? Good to I'm see amazing. You. Thank you so much for uh, for having me on your show. Yeah, well, welcome to my little humble abode, our little uh, Paleo Hacks home here. Uh, Love it. I'm stoked for the show today, and I have a little story kind of why I'm really excited about this. because Ooh, I like stories. Let's it, go. It goes back to middle school, Steve, and um, there I am, and Guitar Center, or, no, Guitar Hero came out. Remember that game? Of course. With the guitar and everything. Oh, yeah. And my two best friends at the time, Anders and Eric, were obsessed with this thing. They went and bought the exclusive expanded pack of Guitar Hero and spent somewhere $300 on the guitar. And then they spent an extra 100 hours learning, I think it was Green Day on Expert. And they thought, Clark, come here. You got to check this out. And so I watched them just shred on this $300 guitar playing the song. And I'm like, how long did this take you to learn? They said, all week. And in my mind, I was like, well, you know, you could have, for $300, bought a real guitar and 100 hours, learned the real song and be playing this for real. And it just all kind of clicked. Um, sure. And I, when I was researching you, man, and, and your work, and that seems kind of like your story, I know. Um, and I, I love that you have the emphasis on still doing the games or still doing what you love, but also not neglecting kind of the real life and learning it on expert, but also being able to level up in, in your real life. Yeah, I don't know. It's, I, I spent a, a large majority of my childhood playing video games, but I also like, loved to go out in the, in the woods behind my house and imagine I was, I was the character from that game and you know, making like bow and arrows. And I actually, I remember one time I made bow and arrows. I was just finished playing was Legend of Zelda, and that was probably like in maybe seven or eight Uh and I made a bow and I got the string and I was making arrows and I was like well my arrows need to have you know feathers on the end so they fly straight I didn't have access to any feathers so I was like all right I'll just use some leaves Uh, I actually used poison ivy leaves uh, by accident which I wasn't aware of until I the next morning I woke up and like half of my face aka the part that I was like drawing the bow back on was swollen so badly that my eye was swollen shut. I couldn't see. Uh, so uh, I, I took it to, to, I think, a bit of an extreme. Um, so yeah, I think, I, I think there's some really positive benefits that can come out of video games. And to this day, like I was just playing a game last night called Witcher 3, and it's awesome. And like I'll play it for another week or two, and I'll beat it. And then it's like, okay, like that's, that's glad they got that out of my system. And now like what's the next adventure I'm going to go on in, in real life? So I, I, I try to strike that balance between uh, games as entertainment and games as uh, almost education, really, for me trying to sculpt what myself as a character in this giant game of life we are currently playing uh, yeah. looks like. And it's weird because on one hand, games are kind of stigmatized by society like gamers. You know, they have that in the basement, dark, drinking Mountain Dew stigma behind them. But also, I mean, on the other hand, now you're seeing this big uh, turnaround with like Twitch streaming and gamers are some of the most high paid professional athletes they're considered it's now. Crazy. It's crazy. It's na- I mean, it's really yeah. cool. It's really cool. Uh and and it's this is this is funny. So you know, I run a website called Nerd Fitness, and I, when I started it, I, it wasn't done because I was like, oh, this is a market I can capitalize on. I was just like, I'm a huge nerd, and I like fitness. So like, let's just this just makes sense. So like, there was a, like two months ago, Fox Fox put out a, a news report. I saw that yeah, about yeah. like trendy fitness things, and like the newest trend was like nerds and fitness. I was like, ah, oh, crap, we're trendy. <laughs> I can't wait for us to go back to being not trendy, you know, because thanks to like Marvel and Star Wars and every and every superhero character now, like like it's like 
it, in, until I think Robert Downey Jr. became Iron Man, like being playing a superhero, like was was a very risky venture. And now it's like you you sign a deal to become a superhero, you get in insane shape, and then everybody you know uh, ogles over you on the internet. Everybody's like, how to do the Wolverine workout or yeah. the workout to get uh, you know whatever. So the Bruce Wayne workout, yeah, the Bruce Wayne workout, and the how Daniel Craig got in shape for James. Even James Bond is now like a hulking monster in a in a good way. Yeah. So like being nerdy and fit is now in. But nine years ago when I bought the domain, I was just like, I, I don't know, like I I'm, I have social anxiety and I love to play video games. Sure. Uh, but I want to help people be fit because I know how addictive games can be. And if you're a nerd and you play video games, you probably have an addictive personality. And oftentimes that bleeds over to unhealthy eating habits and, uh, you know, kind of like being socially withdrawn and things like that. So I don't know. It just made a lot of sense to me to combine the two. And now it's like now it's in I'm like crap. <laughs> so I'm excited for us to fall out of favor again and we can go back to just being um, nerdy and, and so helping people. You're a hipster nerd, Steve. You yeah, liked I was, it before. I was, it was, I was cool. a third before it was cool. Yeah, I mean. man. So going back to the Fox News thing, you know, they give you probably like 60 seconds before they they interrupt you those little sound bites but sure. sometimes that's enough to get the message across of what you're all about and stuff so if, if you were to describe to someone who came up to you on the street and said steve what's nerd fitness about who's it for what what does it do sure. um what's your kind of fox news 60 uh, second bit nerd fitness is an online community made up of people from all over the world that have some sort of nerdy pursuit and are also interested in living healthier, getting stronger, and trying to live a more adventurous life. Um, and for my definition of nerd, it's not what you love, but it's how you love it. And I stole that from King Nerd, uh, Will Wheaton. Hmm. He said something like, it's not what you love, but it's how you love it in that you care so deeply about something that you dig into the backstory behind it. Uh, you know, you might be a concert nerd where like you go and you research like set lists and, and try to learn every song from your favorite band or you are a, a med school nerd and you just love studying the human body and anatomy and, and memorizing how each muscle group talks to each other. Or you might be a gamer nerd like myself and, you know, I'll play a game and then I'll immediately hop online and read about the backstory and watch developer commentary about the guy that built the game and, and and dig in that way for other people it might be books or comic books or and anything and everything in between so uh when somebody says you're a nerd essentially what they're saying is hey you care a lot about stuff and uh that's the way i look at it i use the term very endearingly and very positively uh it's funny often like i went to see uh went to the doctor to get like a physical the other day and the guy's like what do you do i'm like i run a website called nerd fitness and he's like oh do, you're not a nerd like don't say that and i'm like dude it's no like it's it's a good thing right. and he's like you don't look like one i'm like well i you know I, first of all that's that's like reverse judgment uh yes i am a nerd and i'm very proud of it and i uh you know i just also happen to enjoy helping people get stronger and make have a healthier relationship with their food he probably hasn't seen the Bruce Wayne workout or the Wolverine <laughs> one, man. Right. Um, I'm a pomade nerd. I love hair products. That's my thing. That's my big thing, man. You should see my bathroom. It's just got... How, how many would you say you have? Probably 30 to 50. 30 to... Do you have, like... Do you rotate them or do you have... Do you, like, was, it, was it, like, going through 50 of them to get it down to a specific one that's, like, is now, like, your go-to? Yeah, that's a good question. I actually started making them. So I, Whoa, oh, yeah. you are a pomade nerd. Then. I am, You're not man. Kidding. I'm a homebrew pomade nerd. My brother and I, yeah, we got to send you some. You use product? <laughs> I'm in. I do. Okay. All right. After the call, what we got is, a little. I couldn't tell you. So clearly I need help. Okay. We got it. It um, comes in a little thing like this and I buy it at CVS and I go like this in my hair and it takes about three seconds. Nice. Okay. We'll, we'll level up your hair, Steve. After the <laughs> Perfect. So the concept of leveling up nerd fitness, it really resonates with a lot of people based on uh, your blog. And some of the stories on there are crazy. People losing 100 pounds, 200 pounds. Um, kind of describe the everyday person that you're seeing or working with or that is reading your blog for the people sure. at home. They're, they're anywhere from 20 to 40. And that what I would say that would probably occupy 80% of our audience. And then there's you know 10% that happen to be a little bit younger and 10% that go all the way up to 70s, 80s, 90s. Uh, seriously. Um, I just sent a shirt to uh, a woman in... Arizona, who was, I think she's like 79 or 80 or something. She's like, I love nerd fitness. I was like, this is the coolest thing I've ever heard. And I'm sending you a t-shirt just because I, 
you know, in place of me being able to give you a hug and say, this is amazing, I'm going to send you a t-shirt. Uh, so, so anyways, uh, nerd fitness is primarily targeted at somebody that would be 20 to 40, uh, somewhere between 20 and 40. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're single or married, kids or not, uh, but you probably work a desk job. You probably have some quirky element to your personality that you are proud of internally and probably don't get to shine a light on publicly. Uh, and you are getting started on your journey to getting fit. You might be a little self-conscious, so going to a gym might be a little scary. Uh, you know you're supposed to eat better, but you're not quite sure what that sounds like. And the idea of exercise to you is probably giving you... Um, giving you a headache, just thinking about, oh, I have to go run on a treadmill for two hours and I have to starve myself and all I can eat is to count calories and do all this stuff. And they find nerd fitness and it's like, oh, like it doesn't have to be miserable. Like Hmm. I can actually have some fun with this, uh, get stronger, make healthier food choices. And I still get to do all the nerdy stuff that makes me who I am. And that stuff is not only encouraged, but actually like supported and, uh, emphasized I think through nerd fitness so it's somebody in that in that range they work a desk job they have normal responsibilities but they're also interested in in making some changes to their lives uh it started with just health and fitness advice and now with the release of this book and as I've been running the site for over seven seven and a half years at this point uh it's evolved to include helping people you know overcome fears and start traveling for the first time go on their their first adventure uh and and anything pretty much anything in between it's 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 sort of become like a life development site for people that are probably skeptical of the term like you know personal development and and self help and whatever it really is sure. in the, it's in that vein but it's done from a skeptical nerd's perspective of somebody that loves to dig into the research and get realistic and kind of gritty about it. Well, a lot of the personal development starts with health. That's how a lot of people get into it and they start making that change and it's the trickle down effect. Um, yeah. Yeah. Momentum. Momentum. So um, with health and fitness, then let's just take fitness, nerd fitness. What's kind of your approach with uh, the fitness component of everything? Uh, Two two things. Uh, I would say, first and foremost, you have to enjoy what you're doing Um, or you you would spend most of your time doing what you enjoy doing. So for anybody that's like, I don't like exercise or you're not going to get me to exercise, they probably have a very negative mindset when it comes to health and fit uh, when it comes to fitness. They're probably thinking it involves me going to a class for 60 minutes or going to a sweaty gym or running on a treadmill and it'll bore you to tears. So they're all they're they're very kind of down on the idea of fitness. And to those people, we say like it's you just haven't found the thing that you love yet. There are so many ways to get fit. And we will talk about this clearly considering the the name of this podcast. But how you eat is 80 percent of hmm. we, we say 80 to 90 percent of the battle is is your relationship with food and nutrition. So that other 10 percent should be made up of things that you enjoy. So if you don't love running on a treadmill or you don't love going to a gym, don't do it. Uh, I haven't run more than a mile probably since high school. And I have no plans on ever running a marathon uh, or a half marathon or a 10K. It's just not my thing. Uh, But I do love gymnastics and powerlifting. So that's where my training uh, falls around. So for anybody who's like, I don't love exercise, like, have you tried swing dancing or martial arts or yoga or parkour or live action role playing or uh, whatever? So pick an activity that sounds interesting to you. And when you're enjoying it, it doesn't feel like exercise. And then all of your other decisions are like, oh, if I eat like this or I get extra sleep or I go to this extra class, it will make me better at the thing that I love. That sounds like a lot of fun. So primarily, it's do something that you love and do it as often as possible. And then secondly, a strong nerd is a healthy nerd is uh, the way we look at it. So functional functional strength uh, with compound movements like push-ups, pull-ups, squats, lunges, very basic things, but a a, a basic strength routine that you can do once, twice, three times a week uh, for anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes, 30 minutes um, will make every other aspect of your life better. So whatever it is, so it's it's a combination of strength training and doing something that you love. That's the fitness component of nerd fitness. Yeah, I think a lot of people too within the health community, they can have the diet right. And sometimes they just don't like exercising. It's not fun for them for whatever reason. And uh, they don't do it because of the fun component. And uh, sure. So, so, do you have any recommendations then to that person who's like, 
all right, Steve, I'm ready to to get it back into exercise and I'm ready to find the fun workout. Do you have any that come to mind off the top of your head? Obviously it's individual, but anything. Yeah. I know the thing that I found resonated the most with me was stop was was changing kind of my mindset when it came to fitness. So for many people they're exercising because one they're either their doctor told them to or because they step in a scale and they didn't like the number they saw. So they see exercise as a means to an end. They're like, oh, just exercise and suffer through this until the scale reads 140 pounds instead of 240 pounds, and then I'll feel better about myself. And I found, for me, that when I changed my focus from instead of what does the scale say or what do I look like to what am I capable of this week compared to what I was capable of last week, Hmm. it it was it was like a fundamental shift in my entire life philosophy and this goes hand in hand with this idea that life is a game so every week i track every workout that i do and i want to make sure and see if i'm a little bit stronger than i was the week before so i have everybody that anybody in reads nerd fitness was like write down your workout like if you can do two push-ups on your knees and that's it and you can do two squats and and then a lunge and then you fall over because that's it it's like okay you now have a baseline. Welcome to level one. Next week, I want you to try that again. You're going to do two and a half squats. You're going to write it down and you're going to see what, what you're capable of. So it's it's a complete shift from uh, I, I, I have to do this workout in order to lose weight. It's Instead, it's I get to do this workout to find out how much more capable and how much more of a badass I am this week than I was the week before. So I can't tell you how many people have found nerd fitness and initially started just because they wanted to look better and feel better, which is great. That's why we probably, everybody starts exercising, I would imagine. Sure. Uh, But they all get to a point where they say, I never thought I would say this, but I actually enjoy working out. Hmm. I'm like, that is like, that makes me so happy to see these people that were 300, 400 pounds. And I'm like, I can't wait to go to my workout today. And I can't wait to see if I can get my first pull up because I was so close last time. And once you start to get these little achievements, again, just like a video game, like you're getting a little bit closer, you're leveling up a little bit more. Once those things happen, they start to, they start to uh, build upon each other. And as you mentioned earlier, momentum, how powerful that can be. And, and it, it, it does trickle down to every other aspect of your life. So for somebody that's brand new and starting, um, and we can talk about this too, but uh, not relying on motivation. I mean, I could go on for about six hours about that. So we're not going to do that because I know we're not have six hours. But uh, the all day it, podcast. Yeah, the all day podcast. You'll listen to it uh, and and just repeat it every day, and I'll tell you what to do at sp- certain moments. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I would encourage people to get started by doing something simple, going for a walk and listening to a podcast or your favorite song, and just repeating that habit for a month. And once you build the habit of going for a walk and doing something that makes you feel better, then you can start to add on to that with some a few push-ups here and there and and and, and then start to mix in uh, some of those activities that you do enjoy and trying and signing up for different things and being okay with not being good at them right away. Yeah, it's the battle of getting yourself to put on the shoes that's half of it right there and then it's already halfway done. And I think for a lot of people... They're going to go crazy because they've heard me tell this story a lot. But for me, I I had a moment of where I just stopped exercising. I don't know why. I've always been a fit person who loved exercising, and then it just stopped clicking. I think I just got bored in my routine. And uh, I realized that I was comparing my current routine with what I used to do in college, and that was giving me a lot of... Uh, discomfort seeing like, oh, I'm not as good as I used to be, or my workouts aren't as long anymore, or I'm not powerlifting as much. And then I realized that showing up is half of it. And what you do is, you know, maybe 20% the other half or something. Um, And so I started lowering my quota and just saying, okay, Clark, if you can go to the gym and take a sauna, then essentially, you're good for the day. You did it. I did it. I won. And so I started going to the gym and just taking a sauna for 15 minutes. And then 99% of the time after I got out of that sauna, I was on the gym floor doing things. And it felt like a bonus. It was uh, the bonus experience points, if you want to go go. that route. It's like uh, it's like Gamish in uh, Braveheart. You know, he says we didn't get dressed up for nothing yeah. when they get ready to go to. You know, they're all That's dressed right. up. Like, are we going to fight? He's like, well, we didn't put this war paint on and get all dressed up to not fight, so we might as well just fight. That's so why, like, when people are like, oh, I want to exercise, like, great, sleep in your workout clothes and put your alarm clock across the room and set your alarm for ten minutes early. All of a sudden, you get to wake up. You have to get out of bed and go across the room to turn it off. And you're like, well, 
I'm already dressed. I, I yeah. guess I should just probably go do the thing. And I've had times too where like, I'll just go to the gym. I don't want to do this, but I know going, I'll do one, I'll do one set and I'll go do the one set. And sure enough, after you do the one set, you're like, oh, I actually feel pretty good now. And all right, I'll do one more. And then sure enough, you get through the entire workout. But had you showed up, had you told yourself you have to do your workout today, you're like, it's not happening. It's not happening. I'm not going to yeah. do it. I'm not going to go. But setting that barrier so low to entry and getting yourself there is such a big part of it. Yeah, there's a time for like the stick of trying to uh, do what you already did and kind of beat yourself up. OK, I can do three more, three more. And then there's a time for the carrot, which is like building on a success, building on that one set, feeling motivated to do two or three. And if you're probably sure. having a hard time getting to the gym, you don't need the stick. You don't need to look at this long 20 exercise 18 set marathon of a workout and feel bad because you only did half of it. You need to chop that thing down to one circuit if you're doing a body sure. weight training and then do whatever you want after that. Yeah, which is fine. Again, you know, people don't want to hear it a lot of times. Well, those that enjoy the exercise but don't want to change their diet. But diet is literally 80 to 90 percent of the battle. Like you can't outrun your fork. And so people are like, oh, I went to the gym and they do like an hour cardio class, you know, and they burn like a few hundred calories, but then they chug like a 500 calorie Gatorade. And I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. You would have been better off sitting on your ass watching TV and not drinking the Gatorade. You would be healthier than doing the, the workout and, and then shoveling food down your throat. So uh, if you can only do a set here or there, and, you know, we actually have a workout under fitness called the Angry Birds workout uh, based on the game. <laughs> and it's. Uh, you like if you can complete different things, you earn different stars based on what the when when you complete it. But what does it look like? What you do you can. Um, I can't. It's been so long to be honest. I probably wrote that workout plan like five years ago. So I mean, it's it's body weight workout stuff, but it's stuff you can do anywhere. And if they're like, if this is too long for you, split it up. Do it. Do uh, one circuit in the morning, one circuit at lunch, and one circuit at dinner. Like, or two in the morning, one at night, or all three at the same time. Like, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Just do them because I've found that when you exercise, hopefully, this is you telling yourself, I am making positive, healthy decisions with my life. I should therefore probably also make healthy decisions with how I'm how I'm eating so when you splice that workout out yes the workout helps the strength training helps but it's more the 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 motion of going through or going through the motion of exercise making healthier decisions so on and so forth I think is what is what really carries you forward so you mentioned Steve that the diet's 80 percent and that's obviously a big theme on this show um, we're not exclusively paleo, even though our name is Paleo Hacks. We're open to everyone's sure. uh, whatever works for them. But what do you recommend to the nerds on Nerd Fitness when they come to you and they're like, Steve, I just, oh, I'm just struggling with diet. What do I do? What would you say? Yeah, well, uh, I, I subscribe to a paleo-ish diet. So um, – a lot of people actually find nerd fitness through the paleo diet. So I read an article now five or six years ago called the beginner's guide to the paleo diet. And it's been viewed like a few million times. So for whatever reason, wow. Google just happened, Google just happened to love it. Uh, and ranked us very highly for the paleo term where it was like us and Rob Wolf for like one and two for a few years at huh. some point, which is crazy. Uh, I don't know if you know where we rank at the moment, but, um, it's called the beginner's guide to the paleo diet. And it's, you know, it was like a very, logical approach to eating like a caveman and you know this being the paleo hacks podcast i don't need to explain it so instead i'll say we encourage people to read that article to get them thinking along this this line uh, thinking along these lines but more importantly our ultimate goal is to get people to have a healthier relationship with their food and the reason i found the paleo diet works for so many people that read nerd fitness one i think that yes they find it because of the paleo diet article but two, nerds tend to have a very addictive personality. And if they're eating foods that have been designed to keep them addicted, aka, you know, junk food and soda and whatever, counting calories and getting yourself to eat only half of something is like is torture. It's like yeah. eating part of something and then saying, okay, brain, you know that thing that, you know, don't think of a don't think of a purple elephant. You're like, well, now the only thing I can think of is a freaking purple elephant. Right. Um when you're like, okay, only eat half of this food, it's like you're starving yourself and saying, oh, I can only eat half of this. I really want the other half. I need it now. I want it. I want it. Give me that food. Give it to me. And uh, when it comes to the paleo diet, it's like, hey, look, you know, we're going to remove emotion from this equation. Instead of counting calories, instead of saying you can only have half of this and then withholding part of it, uh, we say you can eat these few things. Um, 
and in any combination and eat, eat as much of it as eat until you're full. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to take the neurotic neurosis behavior of counting calories, the addictive nature of some of the foods that we eat and, and try to minimize consuming those things. So we're going to have like a rational, healthy relationship with the things that we're putting into our body. So, you know, we tell people it's like, look, have a protein source at every meal eat some vegetables. Uh, if you want to mix in sweet potatoes, rice, oats, like occasionally, like that's, that's totally fine. I have, I have no problem with that. Ultimately, the goal is to get you happy, healthy, and feeling comfortable and confident in your skin. And people are like, well, dude, I heard uh, that a caveman once ate grains. Uh, you know, uh, They found a cave painting 12,000 years ago of uh, a guy that ate grains. Therefore, the paleo diet is debunked. I'm like, Cool, man. Like, go for it. Go yeah. eat. Go eat a, a handful of grains. Then, like, are you happy, healthy, and do you feel good about yourself? And if you can say yes to all three of those things, keep doing what you're doing. It's clearly working for you. Or they get caught up on the name, and everyone wants to debunk the name. It's like right. uh, the paleo thing kind of shot ourselves in the foot that it's called that. Um, maybe pre agriculture or something, or clean eating diet. But that's sure. not sexy. That doesn't sell. Doesn't have the image and branding. Right. Exactly. And you know what? If it's if it's the sexy name that gets people in the door, and it's it, like it's such an easy concept for me to wrap my head around, and I think that's yeah. why people love it. It's like, oh, that's simple. Like, does would a caveman have consumed Captain Crunch? Like, probably not. Right. Would a caveman have consumed a two liter of Mountain Dew? Like, I'm gonna guess no, because it wasn't around back then. So like, I'll just stick to like the real food things. And if I can't pronounce the name of the ingredients, probably not from caveman time. So it just, it makes it so simple. And you're right. You know, as soon as anything becomes popular, it then also becomes popular for people searching for page views to then debunk it and mm-hmm. write about 10 reasons why the book, yeah. I could go on about List- that for six listicles. hours. <laughs> Those are the best. I could go on like that for, geez, on that for six hours too. So 18 reasons Steve Nagel's yeah, book is false. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's, I don't know. So anyway, so it's, it's having a healthy relationship with food, making small changes. Uh, we've, we've had some, we've had many people have success where they go all in, jump in the deep end on the paleo thing. And, and after they get through their first two or three weeks, they're, they're like, they're hooked and like, I get it. I feel immediately better. I'm all in. See you later. Other people have more success doing like one small change at a time because making all those changes drastically sounds very scary to them. And instead of them going on like a diet, we encourage people like you're not dieting for 30 days. You're not doing like a paleo detox. You're doing this is your new life. Like you're going to make a change that you can live with permanently forever. And if that is something in moderation or eating something only occasionally, like that's great. And then two months from now, you're going to make another subtle shift and subtle shift so that 10 years from now, you are a completely different person than you were 10 years ago. Instead of riding this roller coaster, which everybody does currently, I'm going on a diet for bikini season or I'm going on a diet for my wedding. And then they go back to eating like crap and they just repeat the process. Yeah, you really got to know yourself when you're incorporating any habit. That's the biggest thing I've I've realized. And Gretchen Rubin was on here talking about oh, cool. um, four different types of people and habits. She was actually – this will be a week after that, so people can listen to that if they're interested. Cool. Uh, what are some of the common pitfalls people have when they're nerd fitness leveling up, doing the diet thing? Do you get any common sticking points that a lot of people are facing? Sure. Uh, I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's um, exclusive just to nerd fitness, but in people in general, I've found, and this is interesting because there's actually some, some recent uh, studies have come to light that might put this hmm. quote unquote research into, into, into question, but it's the idea that uh, your willpower is a limited resource. Um, and it's, it's, I, I like to put it into video game terms where it's like you go outside and you try to attack 10 different bad guys at the same time and sure enough like when trying to fight 10 people at once you're going to get your ass kicked or you go and attack a guy that is 50 levels higher than you you're going to get your ass kicked but if you pick one bad guy who's at the same level as you and you kill him you get a little bit stronger then you pick the next bad guy so in life this equivalent would be people that wake up on january 1st and they're like i'm gonna go paleo and i'm gonna start exercising an hour a day i'm gonna start flossing and i'm gonna do this other thing too and they try to change their entire life overnight and after two weeks, they're so burned out and miserable or their kid gets sick and or they take a vacation and all of those things go out the window because they attack too many bad guys at once. And your willpower, being a finite resource, uh, gets depleted very quickly. So what, in, what we encourage people to do then, it's like, hey, I love the enthusiasm. I love that you're fired up to exercise. I love that you're ready to make changes to your diet. 
use that enthusiasm and use that motivation to structure your life in a way now when you have the motivation to set yourself up to succeed when you when that motivation starts to wane, when your willpower starts to run out. So for somebody who's like, I'm going to eat healthier every day and like they're fired up, it's like, great. Today, I want you to spend an hour and a half. I want to go to the grocery store and prepare your meals for the rest of the week. You're fired up now, great, because you might, if you don't do that, you'll eat a healthy meal today and you go for a run. But come Thursday, after you have a miserable day at work, all you're going to want to eat is pizza and ice cream. Yeah. Um, but you already have a meal sitting in the fridge ready to go. You're like, I'll just eat the thing that I've already paid for and prepared. Yeah. So you kind of ride that. Uh, I think Ramit Sethi is a, a brilliant guy that's, that talks about a lot of this stuff. He runs a really great website called I Will Teach You To Be Rich, um, personal finance and personal development. But he talks about like riding that motivational wave in a way that you're structuring your life to succeed. So if you're fired up and ready, uh, go into your calendar and put every workout into it and schedule it cook all of your meals the beginning of this week because when you're motivated it's easy it's when you're not motivated when you don't want to go to the gym that's when you're actually going to find success is sticking with it day in day out week after week month after month year after year so for for most people that struggle it's they try to do too much too soon and they get burned out very quickly so we tell them like hey back off we're gonna get there but we need you to do it one step and one small habit at a time it's the consistency over the intensity and uh some, yes. Sometimes when you're feeling intense, it's a good way to keep yourself consistent is to batch the tasks like you're talking about with the meal preps or uh, the workout scheduling in your calendar ahead of time. Um, do you have any other tips for people who uh, to combat that willpower um, or to be more consistent? Yeah, actually, I, have, I have a whole book of them. Uh, it's called Level Up Your <laughs> we, plan, uh, no, we, we plan that. What's 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 funny is actually I couldn't get myself to to start writing this book. So like I signed the book deal with uh, Rodale a few years ago, and uh-huh. they gave me twelve months to write the book. And you know, like six months later, you know, I, I probably shouldn't be publicly admitting this, but like six months later, like I hadn't written a word yet. I was like, I'm so overwhelmed at the idea of writing this book. Right. And I think for many people, they're like, I'm so overwhelmed. Like, how the hell? I'm you know, I'm forty years old, and I'm. 200 pounds overweight, how the hell am I going to lose 200 pounds? Um, And I just couldn't get myself to start in the book. And I was like, I'll wait until I'm motivated or I'll wait until the time is right or wait until I have, I can set aside a full six hours and get started. It's like, (laughs) dude, when, you know, if you're waiting for that magical moment, it's never going to happen. So for somebody that's looking to get in shape and, and whatever, I found... Like I ended up like writing about this in the book, but I struggled with it while I was writing the book. So it was like very meta- you know, the, the, what's the old saying? It's like, how do you eat an elephant? There's a lot of elephant references today for some reason. Uh, how do you eat an elephant? It's one, one bite at a time. So there's this massive task in front of you or this massive goal you're trying to accomplish. You know, I like to break it into daily, daily goals. So I stopped worrying about having to write a whole book. And instead I worried about waking up first thing in the morning and I have a, an environment structured so that the only thing I had to do was write 500 words. Hmm. And that was it. They didn't have to be good. I didn't have to like them. I could even start writing. I don't want to write today, so I'm going to write about blah, blah, blah. But I had to start writing, and I had to write 500 words. I blocked all my social media. I had a certain playlist loaded up. I had the internet turned off. I used a program that had a word counter so I could see a little experience bar, very much like a video game, <laughs> fill up as I wrote my 500 words. What was and the program hit, called? Uh, it's called Scrivener. It's uh, a lot oh, of screenwriters yeah. use it. S S C R I V E N E R I N E R something like that. Scrivener. Uh, it's mostly used, I think, by I think authors and play or people that write screenplays use it. Uh, but it's got this little word counter, and as it fills up, it turns from red and fills up and goes orange, yellow, green. And when you hit that 500 word and whatever whatever you can set whatever word uh, count that you want, it gives you this really satisfying ding noise nice. very much like leveling up in a video game and for me this is like a pavlovian response like i started to crave that that noise every morning because i knew it showed me to accomplish that task so for somebody's like oh man i i need to get in shape it's like okay man we're gonna make one change to your diet and you're gonna go for a five minute walk every morning that's it and you're gonna check a box that says you completed both of those things 
And after you do both of those things for 30 days, you will earn, like you said earlier, the carrot, you'll earn some reward that rewards you back to borrow from uh, more video games. You know, don't reward yourself with, oh, I I exercise for a month, so I get to eat this giant chocolate cake and chug a case of beer. It's like, that's not a good reward. Reward yourself with a new pair of running shoes or a new workout shirt or a trip to a gym membership or sign up with a personal trainer to finally try doing squats and deadlifts for the first time. Something that rewards you back and continues to help you build uh, momentum. So start small, uh, aim small, miss small, I like to say, and and break it into something that you can complete every day regardless of whether or not you feel good about it. What's the feeling when you go into like a Amazon bookstore and you see level up your life right there sitting next to all the other ones? Is it a proud moment? Yeah, it was cool. I, I remember walking into the Barnes & Noble here in New York and you know, finding seeing my book on the shelf, and uh, very surreal for me. Uh, actually, so I bought nine years ago. I was in construction equipment sales, and I was very terrible at it. And I was driving around on my jo- on my lunch break one day, and I went into a bookstore, and it happened to be right around the time that uh, Tim Ferriss's For Our Work Week had come out. And I saw it on the shelf, and the cover intrigued me, so I picked it up and I read the first few pages. And ended up buying it, took it home, and like less than I think, I can't remember the specific dates, but I, within within a few weeks, I had purchased NerdFitness.com. I, that's how inspired mm-hmm. I was by the book and and what it had led me to. So, books have been such a monumental teacher, or such a, such an uh, impactful teacher, I guess, for me over the years, even as a little kid. And then Tim Ferriss's that, that book in particular drastically altered my life's path. So I wanted to kind of further that idea and put together a book that would hopefully inspire others and and be that be that moment for other people where they could walk into a bookstore where they're kind of lost and figuring things out and they see the cover and it intrigues them so they pick it up and they read the first two pages and they're like this guy lived like james bond in monaco like that sounds like a cool story like i want to know how he did that so you know it's funny the book is not it's not really a health and fitness book it's a it's a personal development book that helps people do the things they say they've always wanted to do, which can include health and fitness, but also travel, adventure, learning a musical instrument, a language. Um, but it's all done with the nerdy, adventurous, fun elements of, of nerd fitness mixed throughout. So it was a pretty cool moment to walk into a store and have my mom like send me a picture. She's like, I'm at a bookstore and blah, blah, blah. And they have your here, they have it here too. And I'm like, that's, it was, I know it was really very surreal and, and pretty, pretty freaking awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, you know, I guess talking to Steve who didn't write a book back in 2009 and that whole process from going there to now where you are and you've done it all uh, in terms of a blog, very successful. What advice would you give to Steve who's just starting out in 2009 that he couldn't really see? It's mm. a good question, man. I don't know. Uh, like, Although I hated my job and I was so terrible at it, I'm so thankful I had it because it taught me a lot about what I didn't want to do and what was important to me. And, and it led me down the path, you know, had I had I been just comfortable but not totally miserable in that job, I don't know if I ever would have made the leap that I did to eventually lead me to the path to start Nerd Fitness. So I don't know if I would change too much other than just don't be so hard on yourself. I don't know. That's really, that's 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 an easy one to say in retrospect, but sure. you know, just uh, go, go, go trying to do everything all the time and, and not growing fast enough and trying to help more people and not sleeping and wondering, worrying about every little thing. And it's like, you know, the, life is short and you only have so many days to, to spend on things that are exciting to you with people that you enjoy. And I probably said yes to far too many obligations. Yes to too many things that I've felt obligated to say yes to, or said yes to things that, were a waste of my time and and worried about things that in the grand scheme of things really don't matter. So uh, I, I have to remind myself that constantly what's important and and that importance is helping people, leaving uh, leaving the world I think a better place than when I than when I got here, and creating stories with people that help me lose track of time. And anything beyond that is kind of gravy. So paleo gravy. Um, <laughs> And uh, yeah, I don't know. That's uh, I was just. I think I just got really caught up, probably early on. But that also probably allowed to allowed me to get to where I am. So I, I can't say I would change anything. Yeah. Just tell myself to not be so hard on myself. Really, disappointment and frustration sometimes are uh, the best motivators. 
oddly enough, or like the hardest, the hardest things of where you're frustrated at a construction job or you don't like it. Sure. Um, those big traumatic changes in life can really shake things up. I just, I just needed it. You know, uh, my next job after that was, was far better. I was in a marketing department of a company that chartered floating music festivals, which was so much freaking fun. And <laughs> like then, on a big, uh, a big boat. Yeah, like we chartered cruise ships from Carnival Cruise Lines and Norwegian Cruise Lines and put 30 bands on the board and then turned it and then sold the rest of the spots to fans of the musicians. So like Whoa. I carried John Mayer's luggage off a cruise ship and like waited next to him like until he got in a limo and then uh like we did cruises with Kid Rock and Leonard Skinner and uh John Mayer uh, and Kid Rock in the same room. That's interesting. Well, they were on different boats. So like they each have their own like okay. so John Mayer had his own cruise ship and Kid Rock had his own boat and like it, it was very Can't see it was those very fans cool I, going together. <laughs> yeah, I, I learned a lot about um I learned a lot about marketing and and community building and creating experiences for people. And now we get to do that. We're like we have this event every year called Camp Nerd Fitness, which is so much freaking fun. We actually just put it on sale uh, yesterday and it takes place every fall. It's a four day event where we bring in 16 instructors and we have costume parties and, and people learning yoga, parkour, um, martial arts, sword fighting, archery, Hmm. improv, swing dancing. And then like you put on your nerdy costume and come have like a, like a dance party at night or play board games. Like it's, it's cool to create that experience in real life. Um, and expand outside of just the internet portion of uh, the nerd fitness community. Sure, yeah, doing the real life stuff. So uh, that's on sale for this fall. Yeah, it's um, September twenty first to twenty fifth or sixth. Uh, my brain's uh, blanking at the moment, uh, but it's at campnerdfitness dot com. It's in takes place in Georgia, about two hours north of the city of Atlanta. It's up in the mountains. We take over this entire retreat, change the names of everything to something really nerdy, where it's like it's Hobbiton and Hogwarts, and you know everything is inspired by nerdy lore. So it's a it's it's a place where it's it's kind of like our. It's like our little Hogwarts experience. Like we take over the whole thing and, and we get to, we're in charge of everything. You get, you, we have, uh, there's, we take care of your lodging. Every meal is actually prepared by um, somebody I'm sure your listeners are very familiar with. I'm not prepared by physically, but um, Michelle Tam from Nam Nam Paleo oh, yeah. is one of our, one of our headmasters. Uh, that's what we call our coaches. And all the recipes and all the food at camp is based on her recipes. Um, so it's a, it's a pretty cool experience. I got to email her back. We uh we had a show scheduled and then I don't know what happened. I think I messed up and Classic. lost the email. <laughs> Classic yeah, Clark. T- get it together, Clark. <laughs> I know, She's I know. So funny. She she came yeah. to camp last year and she had a she had so much fun and she, like she's like, can I, you know, we like, do you want, can you come back again this year? She's like, hell yeah, I'd love to come back. I don't even know if she said hell yeah. I'm just assuming she did. Like yeah. in my mind, this is how excited she was. But um, yeah, it's, I don't know, it's such a cool, it's a cool thing for us to be able to put together and to have people like her just can't wait to come to it. It's, it's, it's a very, very fun experience. Well, Steve, uh, where can people go to get nerd fitness where it's a, or level up your life? So yeah, speak. level up. It's available in bookstores nationwide. Uh, the easiest would probably be Amazon.com. The I would recommend picking up the hardcover. I'm actually using them as a as a stand only because then you can do this. You can hold it up in front of you oh, like that's this. That's funny. That's cool. Uh, what's What's really funny is I didn't even plan that. Like I just I, I had the the artist come up with a book cover, and then it wasn't until the book came out, a friend of mine. Um, Pat, Pat Flynn, who runs smartpassiveincome.com, was doing a, a periscope or was talking about the book. And one of the people like watching it was like, uh, hey, if you hold it up like this, like it looks like you're the person in the book. And he's like, oh, man, that's great. Somebody take a screenshot and send it to Steve. And then like the next day I had like dogs and cats and babies like all holding up their books in front of them. So it became a thing, which is which is cool. So you can learn about it at Level Up Your Life. Uh, dot com. If you want to read the first chapter about my crazy adventure living like James Bond in Monaco, and you can actually cr- we we built out a system where you can actually create your own character, write your backstory, create your list of quests and missions, assign experience point values to them, and as you cross off your daily or life goals, uh, actually level up your life. So levelupyourlife.com, dot uh, com, nerdfitness dot com will get you to any of the things that we've talked about today. Steve, my man, thanks for coming on. It was a good time talking about fitness, dieting, nerd fitness, and uh, hair products. A good time. Hair products. That's right, man. <laughs> Level up your hair. We talked about all. We talked about a lot of stuff. Yeah, we did. Um, yeah, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're welcome back anytime, dude. So thanks. Cool. So like tomorrow, and then the next day, I'm coming Same over. Time. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Going up yeah. to Seattle on the Kid Rock cruise ship. Perfect. <laughs> all right, man. Take it easy. <laughs> Level up your life. What'd you guys think? Good show? Lots of energy on that one. I love it. Love when you can just joke around, have a good time. 
Uh, that's Steve from Nerd Fitness. Thanks for coming on, Steve. If you guys want the show notes, highlights, and timestamps, you can head over to the article on this at paleohacks.com. We have all our other shows as well from this podcast because you don't want to miss them. They're so good. Don't want to miss a show. Hey, if you haven't heard the show we did with Wim Hof a couple uh, months ago, I think in January, about how he can hold his breath under ice, or no, how he can take an ice bath for three hours, you should probably check that one out. That one is amazing. It's the Wim Hof uh, episode on here. I think it's titled The Iceman or something like that. He holds over 20 world records, and we do this intense breathing exercise that you can follow along with and do um, that he uses to actually swim under ice and all that stuff. So that's the Wim Hof episode on our Paler Axe podcast. If you head over to ClarkDanger.com, get the free 11 questions to change your life ebook. This is an ebook I put out totally free, and it's guess what it is? The 11 best questions to change your life. I've collected these over the years and put them into kind of one big workbook uh, for you to answer if you're interested in that stuff. And it's 100% free. All you have to do is put in your email on my website at clarkdanger.com and they will get sent right to you. All right, that's it. Thanks for listening. Enough rambling. I will see you next Thursday. Thank you so much for listening. If you made it to the end, gold star.